Blue Collar Watches again. Uh, the content of this video I had discussed doing in the comment sections of one of my videos, and I'm just finding out getting around to doing the video. Anyway, the subject. How can China manufacture and ship these watches so cheap? I mean, there's five examples there. The top left one, the Yilang, being my most expensive watch from China at $200. And the bottom right one, the Polaris, I think I paid $27 for that watch. And all the ones on the top are of a higher quality. Uh, they all have sapphire crystals, 316L stainless steel. Uh, they at least have an NH35 in them. The Yilang has an NH36. The two bottom ones, the Benyar and the Polaris, being uh, a, a cheaper home-branded Chinese movement. Anyway, how can they sell these? Well, the Shanghai district has the highest minimum wage. I think it's like 31 provinces. The minimum wage in that district the min uh, is $400 a month. So the cost of manufacturing is substantially cheaper. The biggest bonus in for China is the shipping. It's called e-packing. Uh, there is 160 member countries in in this. It's uh, it's called the Universal Postal Union. United States, you know, Great Britain, Canada, France, Germany, all of that. China really does have an unfair advantage when it comes to shipping. Whereas one of those watches to ship from China costs approximately $2. If I was to ship that from say, one state to the next here in the United States, it would cost about $8. This is set to expire in 2025 with the United States, but the increase will only be 17%. The United States Post Office actually loses money Every time a watch is shipped to the United States, they lose about a dollar on everything they ship. This is why our post office is always in trouble. And we are not the only country that does this. This is, like I said, there is 160 member countries in the universal postal system. So, it's, you know, it's, it's an unfair advantage that China has. Uh, and I, know I don't try to do politics, but the Trump administration did try to even this playing field out so that U.S. manufacturers, you know, they could ship at the same rate. Of course, it never come to fruition. Uh, so China really does, they have the, the lower labor cost. Now, that's an economic thing within your country. I get that. But giving them the unfair advantage in shipping where this is why people drop ship stuff. It's cheaper to ship it from China than it is to ship it domestically. And again, like I said, it's e-packet, Universal Postal Union, 160 member countries. It was developed, I believe it was developed, I want to say by the United Nations, but I don't want to misquote. It was so the developing countries could compete. Um, I wouldn't really call it competing anymore. They're dominating. When they can build a a quality product. Like I said, those top three watches that I, I really like all three of them. They're all, like I said, 316L, Sapphire Crystal, all have, all have really good movements in it. But we can't compete with that. When you're only paying a guy, people here in the United States, if they got to make more than $400 a week to survive, where these people are doing it on $400 a month. And I said, that's the Shanghai district. That's the highest paid in, in China. Anyway, I had said at one point I was going to make this video explain that a little bit. That's it, in a nutshell, condensed. Okay, that's it. <laughs>